God wants to be close to us. No matter how burdened you feel, no matter how anxious and tired you might be feeling right now, God wants to come in and restore your spirit. He wants to bind up our wounds. He wants to be close to the brokenhearted. And even though we might be crushed in spirit, that is the time that Jesus wants to draw near to you. He wants to encourage you, take your hand and tell you, you know what, only believe. Your future is not over. I still have a plan and a purpose for your life. What you can experience is so much bigger than what you can see right now. Let me take you by the hand and lead you. He wants to lift up and restore our spirit where our spirit might be crushed. But today we are going to look into the scripture and I'm going to continue talking about the breakthrough. A breakthrough theory is that I have started last time I have been preaching, talking about a breakthrough that God wants to give us. Because God has spoken over this church, and I believe has spoken over your life, that there will be revival, that there will be something happening. And next year, the theme will be the, the year of the Lord's favor, that God's favor is supposed to be upon us. But we need a breakthrough in order for what we think and know is supposed to happen to actually happen in our life. We want to bring the favor of God into our today. So that we don't say, oh, maybe next year or maybe in a few years from now, we will see the favor of God in the church and in our life. No, we want it now. So we need a breakthrough to see what God wants to do in our life, in our today. So today we're going to talk about the who of a breakthrough. Last time I spoke, we talked about the purpose of a breakthrough. And if you forget anything that I have spoken then, probably now I can see already the puzzled faces. What did Pastor Stephen preach again? Huh? What was that again? The, the whole purpose, if I concise it down to just one statement, the purpose of a breakthrough is to get you closer to God. Full stop. That is basically the purpose of a breakthrough. It is not having a nicer car, getting a bigger house, having a nicer number in our bank account. Now all that one might be the result of a breakthrough, but the purpose of the breakthrough is to get you closer to God, get you aligned to the word of God and the will of God a little bit more. The purpose of a breakthrough is to get closer and closer to God. Today we're going to talk about the who of a breakthrough. And I'm not talking about who is the breakthrough for, I'm talking about who is the breakthrough that we are talking about. And the scripture that I'm going to look into this morning actually is the main scripture that inspired the entire series that we are talking about now. And that is found in Micah chapter 2 verse 13. Micah chapter 2 verse 13 says, The breaker, the Messiah who opens the way, shall go up before them, liberating them. They will break out pass through the gate and go out. We are talking about a breakthrough, a breakthrough moment. The Messiah, the one who brings liberation and breaks you out of your circumstances. Now, if you're a bit familiar with Micah, if you read Micah chapter one, God comes down harshly and pronounces judgment over the people of Israel because of their sin and their disobedience and idol worship. But now in chapter 2, there comes the switch from being judgmental and pronouncing judgment over them. In chapter 2, now all of a sudden the shift comes where it says, you know what, but the breaker will come. The breakthrough is coming. The Messiah is coming who will let you break out and lead you into liberation, into freedom. We are talking about Jesus being the breaker. The Messiah is the breaker. Jesus is the Messiah. So Jesus is our breakthrough. So the who of a breakthrough is Jesus Christ. He is the one who can produce that breakthrough that we are so desperately need in our life. Who is the breakthrough? Jesus. And he is able and he is willing to come in and give us the breakthrough that we need. He is the breakthrough. Now put a pin in that. We're going to come back to that. We as humans are made up 
in the image of God, right? We are created in the image of God. God is a triune being. God the Father, God the Son, and God of the Holy Spirit. And we are made up of three parts as well in the image of God. We are spirit, soul, and body. All these three things make up who you really are. You cannot separate one from the other, otherwise you will not be the complete person that you are. So we are made up of spirit, soul, and body. And when we are talking about a breakthrough, Jesus wants to come in and be our breakthrough. He wants to restore us in our spirit. He wants to restore us in our soul. And he wants to restore us in our physical body. Because that is who we are. We are complete only if you take into account all three, spirit, soul, and body. And of course, like Pastor David already mentioned, I like a good definition. So we're going to go into what a spirit and soul and our body really means. So if you go into the spirit, what is our spirit? What is your spirit? Your spirit is the internal part of a person that connects with God. So your spirit is that that longs for God. Your spirit inside of you is that what connects with the spirit of God. Our eternal part of us, that which will live on for all eternity. The spirit within you is that that connects with God. But we also have a soul. And the soul is where our mind is, where our emotions are. That is what we feel. That is what we think. That is the worldviews that we have. And that is all affected by what is going on in our life. So our soul is our emotions, our intellect, our mind. And then we have, of course, the physical body, which is the physical aspect of our being. It is the vessel that houses the soul and the spirit. Now, the key is that we have to take care of all three parts of who we really are. We cannot neglect one or the other. Because once we neglect one or the other, we will not be healthy as we should be. Physical, in our soul, emotions, in our mind, but also in our spirit. So it is like a garden. Just in April, we went back to Germany and we took a long drive with the family down to Chiemsee. Chiemsee is a, a big lake in Germany that has an island in the middle of the lake which has a nice castle. So we took the ferry over with the family. We had to walk quite far to the castle. But once you turn the corner, because it's in the middle of a forest, once you turn the corner, it opens up and you see the castle in the background. But what really amazed me was the garden in front of the castle. It was beautiful. So many flowers, so much grass, so many trees. But the one thing that was so nice about it, it was kept so well and so nice. Now, if you wouldn't keep your garden, what would happen to your garden? It would just go crazy. It would get messy. It would overgrow. Everything would become a jungle, right? Like, you know, I like to bring things that I will show you. So I thought about bringing some gardening tools. But who am I kidding? I'm not doing any gardening. So I thought, I'm not going to go and buy gardening tools that I'll just show you guys, fake it a little bit here, and then I will never use again. But a garden has to be kept well. It has to be attended to. It has to be toiled the soil, and you have to water the plants, and you have to cut things away and plant new things, and you have to take care of the garden so that the garden will be so beautiful that everybody would say, wow, so nice. If you wouldn't take care of it, it would just get messy and become a jungle. And that can happen if we don't take care of ourselves. You have to take care of your spirit, you have to take care of your soul, and you have to take care of your physical body. But you have to take care of all of it. Don't neglect one or the other, because we want to be healthy and fulfill everything that God has for us. So we have established that Jesus is our breakthrough. He is the breaker that can lead us into liberation, into freedom. He is our breakthrough. But we are spirit, soul, and body. So when Jesus comes in, he wants to restore our spirit, our soul, and our body. 
And to illustrate the whole point how Jesus does that, we're going to look at the scripture where it talks about Jairus and his daughter. And that is found in Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. And if I just summarize what happened is that Jairus was a synagogue leader. His daughter that was 12 years old was very sick and dying. So he tried everything already. So he comes and hears Jesus is coming to town. So he is thinking to himself, Jesus is coming. This is my chance. Maybe he can do something for my daughter. He goes to Jesus, asks Jesus to come to his house. Jesus agrees. On the way to his house, the woman with the issue of blood comes and touches Jesus, interrupts the whole thing. While Jesus is talking to this woman, a servant comes to Jairus and saying, no point bothering the master anymore, your daughter is already dead. And then Jesus agrees to still go to his house and raises the daughter from the dead. That is the story we're going to talk about today. But Jesus wants to restore our spirit, soul, and body. So the first thing is that we are seeing right here in the story is that Jesus restores our spirit. Jesus restores our spirit. Now put yourself into the shoes of Jairus. Jairus is a synagogue leader. He is a respected man, a man of God, and still his daughter gets sick to the point that she is about to die. I believe he tried everything in his power. Now I'm reading between the lines again. But I believe he did everything in his power to make sure that his daughter would get well, but nothing worked. Finally, he hears Jesus is coming to town. My only hope, the only thing that I have left, that is the only chance I have. And he goes to Jesus and Jesus agrees to come to his house. He must have been so happy and excited and in anticipation that maybe my daughter can be healed after all. But while he was waiting for Jesus to talk to this woman, news comes that the daughter is dead. Imagine how, she must ha how he must have felt. Devastated. In pain. In agony. The daughter is gone. Could I have done a little bit more? Could I have gone seen somebody else? Another doctor? Could I have done anything to prevent this from happening? He must have been completely crushed. But then Jesus says this in Mark 5, verse 36. Jesus paid no attention to what they said, but told him, don't be afraid, only believe. Jesus spoke to him and says, don't be afraid, only believe. See, Jesus was speaking directly to the spirit in Jairus. Because the spirit right here, right there in his life was no more. There was no more hope. There was no more faith. There was no more expectation that anything could happen. My daughter has passed on. This is it. But Jesus comes along and speaks to the spirit of Jairus. Says, don't be afraid. Only believe. The spirit is that that connects us with God. Our spirit wants to commune with the spirit of God. So by Jesus telling him, don't be afraid, only believe. Believe that I can do something. He was speaking directly into Jairus' spirit. And when I think about how this might have played out, now I believe that Jesus came to Jairus and said, you know what, don't be afraid, only believe. I believe he even took his hand and said, come, let's go to your house. And Jairus might have said, what's the point? What's the point? But Jesus takes his hand and starts leading him back to his own house. When he gets home, he goes to the upper room with Peter, James, and John, and the parents, and raises the girl from the dead. But he was speaking directly to the Spirit. When Jairus was down, had no more faith, no more hope, Jesus spoke and said, don't be afraid, only believe. I wonder who needs to hear that from the mouth of God this morning. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Because sometimes we can get in situations in our life that we don't understand. Things that we never anticipated. Things that we never planned for. 
But now here we are. It's presented to us and all of a sudden, all the hope that we had, all the dreams and ambition that we had for our future, now we get this prognosis from the doctor and says, oh my goodness, my spirit is crushed. I have no more hope. I have no more faith left. Even though I want to believe, I don't know if I can. Our spirit might be crushed. But hear what it says in Psalm 34 verse 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. God wants to be close to us. He wants to bind up our wounds. He wants to be close to the brokenhearted. And even though we might be crushed in spirit, that is the time that Jesus wants to draw near to you. That is the time that he wants to encourage you. Take your hand and tell you, you know what? Only believe. Your future is not over. I still have a plan and a purpose for your life. What you can experience is so much bigger than what you can see right now. Let me take you by the hand and lead you. He wants to lift up and restore our spirit where our spirit might be crushed. Isaiah 40 verse 29 says, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. But those who hope is in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. He will give us strength. If we are brokenhearted, if we are far from God and we have no more hope, no more faith left, he wants to be close to us. He wants to speak and revive the spirit within us that we can say, okay, now I have hope and I have faith for another week. I can do it at least one more week. God wants to be close to you no matter how burdened you feel, no matter how anxious and tired you might be feeling right now. God wants to come in and restore your spirit. God wants to be close to you. Have you ever felt like you have reached the end of your strength where hope feels like a distant memory because it has been so long that you were hopeful? Everything seems impossible Everything seems there is no way that this could ever happen. But even in those moments, God sees you and God feels for you and his spirit goes out to your spirit and he wants to revive what's inside of you. No matter how broken or weary we feel, God wants to restore what seems lost. We have to surrender our doubts, our broken and crushed spirit to him and believe that he can restore our spirit. There is hope. There is hope because we have Jesus who wants to come in. So Jairus believed and said, yes, okay, let's go to the house. And they go to the house and this is where Jesus now restores his soul as well. Jesus wants to restore our soul. Now they come to the house. Jesus goes up into the upper room. And then the, the girl comes back to life and then this is what it says. She got up at once. This is verse 42. Mark 5 verse 42. She got up at once and started walking around. She was 12 years old. When this happened, they were completely amazed. When this happened, they were completely amazed. From no more hope, crushed in spirit, Jesus comes raises the daughter back to life and now she is walking around and they were all amazed the soul is what is our mind our emotions our intellect when they saw what happened it could not be understood in the natural they were amazed at the power of Jesus they were amazed that Jesus had the power to bring her back to life it was something they couldn't understand Something that didn't compute in their intellect, but it happened right in front of their eyes. And now it's not only that she got a little bit better and came back to life, but she was walking around. She was being inquisitive. She was walking around being her usual self when she was healthy in the past. So it was not only a miracle that brought her back to life, but she was still in bed. It brought her back to life and she was her old self again. She was walking around. The parents, the disciples were amazed of what Jesus had done. Jesus wants to restore our soul. 
where we might be crushed and feel far from God. Jesus wants to come in and restore the joy and the happiness in our life. God wants to restore the peace in your life that you might have felt a long time ago. But now it seems so turmoil in your life. It seems so chaotic. But Jesus wants to restore your soul. He wants to bring peace back into your, in your soul. Because that is who he is. Psalm 23 verse 3 says, He restores my soul. He guides me along the right path of his namesake. For his namesake. He restores my soul. Jesus wants to come in and restore the peace that you have lost. He wants to restore the joy that you once felt, but he wants to bring it back into your life. He wants to give you a new passion for the things of God that was there maybe years ago, but he wants to reignite it in your life. Jesus wants to come in and restore your soul. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Where so many of us need rest for our soul. Where do we have to go to? Jesus. He is our breakthrough. He is the one who wants to restore our soul to good health. He wants to do that. I remember when I went to Africa, I was working with the war orphans. At that point, Angola was in civil war for 25 years. The poorest nation I have ever seen in my life. They had literally nothing. So we were working with the orphans who were just living on the streets, children, No family, no parents, just living by themselves. We had a feeding program. So every day we would go out and feed the children, spend time with them. But then we had to go back to our compound because it was still civil war after all. They said, stay in the compound because the compound is guarded day and night. But I believe you can identify now after MCO, I couldn't just stand in the compound. I couldn't just be locked up for month after month, so I, I just went out to see the kids. So I went to where the orphans were staying. There was a bunch of small little boys, eight years old. And I went to see with them, and they were so happy to see me. And then they called me over. They wanted to show me their house. And I say house because it was just about four feet by four feet, made up of cardboard boxes, branches, Leaves, plastic bags, whatever they could find on the beach or in the rubbish. And that was their house and they were so proud of it. And I went over to the little structure there and I put my hand on it. I started shaking it a little bit and I was scared it would fall over, but it held up. And I said, wow, very good. Even though I didn't speak their language, they didn't understand me. I was showing them thumbs up and I said, wow, this is very good. And they were so happy. Next thing is, I went to all four and I climbed into their house, just barely big enough for myself. I turned around. I looked out of the little door that they had and they were in shock that me and Matsale would be in their house. And I looked out at them and I said, this is so, so nice. And I have never seen the demeanor of a person change like I have seen it in that moment. From the hopelessness, the sadness that they had on their face, there was the biggest smiles that I have ever seen. The joy that came and shone on their faces, I will never forget. See, in a moment, just a little act of kindness changed everything within them. And their heart felt joy again. But my heart was broken in that moment. But see, it can happen in a moment. Just one moment could change everything. The joy, the happiness that came on their face happened in a moment. Where we might feel in a dark place, in a dark period in our life, and we might say, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I really don't see what's going what's to happen in my future. Everything can change in a moment. When Jesus comes in, a moment is enough to change your soul. 
Jesus, for Jesus, a moment is enough to restore your soul, to feel that hope again, to feel that passion for God yet again, to feel the peace that has been lost coming in again. It can happen in a moment. All that we need to do is come to God and say, Jesus, give me the peace that I need. Give me the joy that I need. Give me the healing that I need for my heart, for my disappointments, for my brokenness. And Jesus wants to come in and be right there with you. So when life feels unbearable, when all hope seems gone and joy is just gone and your spirit seems crushed and your soul has no more hope, turn to him because he wants to turn that turmoil into peace. He wants to turn that mourning back into joy. He wants to bring happiness and joy back into your life because you are not meant to live by yourself in that state. Jesus wants to come in. He wants to be your friend. He wants to restore your soul. We also see that Jesus comes and restores the body. Jesus right here comes and raises the little girl back to life. And like I said, it was not just a miracle from being dead to now bad ridden, but barely breathing. It was a miracle that went beyond anything they ever experienced. She came back to life and was her old self again, walking around. All happened in an instant. All happened in a moment. And that is the work that God wants to do even to your physical body. That he can come in and do something. But here's what it says right there. Mark chapter 5 verse 43. Mark chapter 5 verse 43. But Jesus gave them strict orders not to tell anyone. And he said, give her something to eat. And all Malaysians say, amen. Jesus said, give her something to eat. You can see it on your face. You also, pastor, give me something to eat. Finish up so I can go for my lunch. See, Jesus did not only bring her back to life, but he was interested in finding nourishment for her physical body. Jesus knew that even though he did a miracle, her physical body, 12-year-old girl, she needs nourishment. She would need to eat something to regain her strength and her health again. So Jesus did not only produce a miracle and says, okay, now it's up to you. I did my part, now it's up to you. No, he did a miracle, but then says, give her something to eat. Because Jesus was interested even in the nourishment of her physical body. So Jesus is interested in what we are going through with our physical body as well. Those who are struggling with health issues, God wants to come in. God wants to bring healing. God wants to lead us to a place where we can get better and well again. Jesus cares for what you are experiencing even in your physical body. It's not only about spiritual things and emotional things. God also is interested in your physical bodies and what you are going through. That's why in Matthew 4, verse 23, it says, Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. See, that little scripture right here, I didn't read the rest of it, but right here at the beginning of verse 23, we see that Jesus is interested in our spirit, in our soul, and in our body. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogue. Teaching in the synagogue, that is the spirit. Jesus teaching them in the synagogue, connecting the spirit with the things of God. Jesus was there doing that. Teaching in the synagogue, proclaiming the good news to all of the people. That, uh, that touches the soul of the people. Telling them that there is hope. That yet there are sinful people, but there is hope because the Messiah has come. He was speaking to their soul and restoring their soul. And then it says here, and then healing every disease and sickness among the people, their body. Jesus is interested in our spirit, in our soul, and even in our physical bodies. Matthew 8 verse 16, when evening came, many who were demon possessed were brought to him. And he drove out the spirits with the word and healed all all the sick. 
healed all the sick. So Jesus, even in his ministry on earth, was interested in the sick people and healing them of all their sickness and disease. We can take that for our life and say, yes, God, you want to take care of my spiritual needs. You want to restore my soul, but you also want to restore health into my body. So God, show me what you can do in my life. Show that the scripture is true, that by your stripes I am healed. That you will provide my every need, not only spiritual needs and emotional needs, but also my physical needs. Every need shall be met. We can proclaim that because God is a God who wants to bring relief to our bodies as well. In the same trip, when I went to Angola, I got malaria three times. I took the anti-malaria medication that the doctor gave me in Germany before I went to Africa. And I took it religiously every day, the same time, right after my food, how I was supposed to take it. I took it and I still got malaria three times. The second time that I got malaria was so bad that it almost took my life. But here's the thing. They took me to the doctor. Doctor said, give me medicine, but that's all he can do. So I had to go back home. It got worse. So they took me to the clinic. Clinic also said they only have medicine, also not working, so I had to go back home. But the thing was, everything that was happening to me, it was almost like an out-of-body experience where I knew it was happening to me, but it almost felt like I was disconnected from my body. It was like I wasn't even really there. It was like I was watching a TV show, what is happening, and I know it is me and it's happening to me, but it was like so distant, so disconnected. And I just had to go home. Nothing they could do for me. But then the pastors and the leaders of the church came and prayed for me. And everything changed in a moment, in an instant. All of a sudden I knew, I, I, I felt like I was there again. It was not in a haze, it was not daisy, it was not just everything was wooshy. It was clear again. And by evening, the fever broke. By the next day, I was out and about, walking around, going back to what I was doing every day. See, God came, and in a moment, in an instant, everything changed. Not slowly, over weeks and months. God can work in that way, absolutely. But God was gracious enough to just give me a miracle right there in that moment. So I know that miracles are possible. I know that God wants and is able to do the miraculous in your life. Are we hungry enough to go before him? Are we humble enough to say, God, I need restoration in my spirit. I need restoration in my soul. Or maybe I need restoration in my body. But know that God is there and he wants to touch you in a very specific, very special way this morning. Amen. So let, as the praise team comes. Let's respond to God and believe that he can do the miraculous in our life. Amen.